Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Deben County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. And as next week is Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to all who celebrate, and we will be skipping a week of Library Connections. I'll be back the following week with a new episode, so have a happy holiday and enjoy Library Connections. Library Connections number 123. This is the Friday, November 18th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number two, Desert Star by Michael Connolly. Ballard and Bosch bury old resentments as they go after two killers. At number three, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number four, The Boys from Biloxi by John Grisham. Two childhood friends follow in their father's footsteps, which puts them on opposite sides of the law. And at number five, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. The actor, known for playing Chandler Bing on Friends, shares stories from his childhood and his struggles with sobriety. At number two, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. At number three, Surrender by Bono. The lead singer of the Irish rock band U2 offers details of his life, career, and activism. At number four, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. And at number five, and There Was Light by John Meacham. The Pulitzer Prize winning biographer portrays the life of Abraham Lincoln. And boy, we got a lot of bio slash memoirs there, don't we? One, two, three, four of them out of five. Must be the season for reading bios and memoirs. Our first recommended read for this week is the new novel, Better Than Fiction by Alexa Martin. Martin shines in this enchanting tale of a reluctant bookstore owner and the author who shows her love is possible. After photographer Drew Young's grandmother dies, Drew inherits her beloved Denver bookstore, The Book Nook. Though not an avid reader, she's determined to keep her grandmother's legacy alive and keep the store going. Among the book nook's regulars are the Dirty Birds, a meddling but endearing group of elderly romance fans who conspire to set Drew up with best-selling romance author Jasper Williams. Sparks fly between the unlikely couple, but complications arise first when Drew's obnoxious, entitled father tries to take over the bookstore and then, when a small but consequential secret 
about Jasper's past with the store comes to light. Hopeless romantic Jasper has a reputation for writing perfect book boyfriends. And readers will find that he fulfills this fantasy pretty well himself. The charmingly ornery Drew makes a great contrast, and it's emotionally satisfying to watch her high walls come down. Stellular supporting characters, especially Drew's bestie Elise and sister Daisy, add humor throughout. The result is utterly entertaining. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our second recommended read for this week is the brand new book by Michelle Obama. It's called The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times, which certainly sounds like the times we're living in, doesn't it? Having said that, let me tell you a little about the book. There may be no tidy solutions or pithy answers to life's big challenges, but Michelle Obama believes that we can all locate and lean on a set of tools to help us better navigate change and remain steady within flux. In the light we carry, she opens a frank and honest dialogue with readers, considering the questions many of us wrestle with, including, how do we build enduring and honest relationships? How can we discover strength and community inside our differences? What tools do we use to address feelings of self-doubt or helplessness? And what do we do when it all starts to feel like too much? Michelle Obama offers readers a series of fresh stories and insightful reflections on change, challenge, and power including her belief that when we light up for others, we can illuminate the richness and potential of the world around us, discovering deeper truths and new pathways for progress. Drawing from her experiences as a mother, daughter, spouse, friend, and first lady, she shares the habits and principles she has developed to successfully adapt to change and overcome various obstacles. The earned wisdom that has helped her continue to become. She details her most valuable practices like starting kind, going high, and assembling a kitchen table of trusted friends and mentors. With trademark humor, candor, and compassion, she also explores issues connected to race, gender, and visibility, encouraging readers to work through fear, find strength in community, and live with boldness. When we are able to recognize our own light, we become empowered to use it, writes Michelle Obama. A rewarding blend of powerful stories and profound advice that will ignite conversation, the light we carry, inspires readers to examine their own lives, identify their sources of gladness, and connect meaningfully in a turbulent world. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation for this week. This is a gothic novel. It's called The Hollow Kind, written by Andy Davidson. The audio is read by Susie James. Davidson delves once again into the underbelly of the American self in this haunting atmospheric tale. In 1989, Nellie Gardner inherits the Georgia turpentine farm Redfern Hill from her estranged grandfather, August Redfern and sees it as the perfect opportunity to escape her abusive marriage and make a new start with her 11-year-old son, Max. Upon arriving, however, Nellie and Max discover that Redfern Hill consists of acres of desolate pine forest and a crumbling farmhouse. Max is the first to notice that something 
isn't quite right with the property. The apparition of a young girl, odd scratching noises behind the walls, and things moving by themselves are just some of the supernatural incidents that occur around the house and cause the gardeners increasing concern. The timeline alternates with flashbacks to August's own odd experiences with the farm beginning in 1917 and slowly revealing the hidden history of Redfern Hill and the ancient restless evil that has lived in its grounds for decades. It's up to Nellie to put an end to the property's legacy of destruction. Davidson impresses with his chilling and immersive world building, effortlessly blending generational trauma with supernatural danger. The result is a harrowing novel that's sure to please fans of gothic horror. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation for the week. This one is nonfiction. It's called The Women of Rothschild, The Untold Story of the World's Most Famous Dynasty. And the audio is read by Francisca Waters. Historian Livingstone delivers a comprehensive and colorful group bio of the women of the Rothschild dynasty. The family tree begins with matriarch Goodall, whose dowry enabled her husband, Mayor A. Rothschild, to start building the family's banking empire. The mother of five boys and five girls, Goodall's female descendants spread across Europe, hobnobbing with prime ministers and celebrities, lobbying popes, and rabbis for social reform, and even breaking Nazi codes at Bletchley Park. The most recent generations profiled include entomologist Miriam Rothschild, known as the Queen of Fleas, her sister Nika, a patron of jazz musicians, including Thelonious Monk, and her daughter Rosie, a psychotherapist and feminist art historian. Livingstone expertly mines diaries, memoirs, and letters for vivid antidotes, including Miriam's description of her and her siblings' romantic suitors as, quote, erotic appendages. The author also illustrates how her subjects push back against anti-Semitism and their family's male culture to take their place in the world. This sparkling history is full of riches. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Ben County Library's YouTube channel. Moving on to our next section, Next week at the library, taking a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the library for the week ahead of us. This time around, that's the week of November 21st through the 26th, 2022. This information can also be found online. Just visit the library's website located at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified, or if the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, of course, just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by clicking on the calendar link and the specific program you're interested in attending. You could call the library or just drop by. On Monday, November 21st, there are no programs at the library. Happy reading! On Tuesday, November 22nd, our first program of the day is Adult Scrabble, which is held in the library's reading room from 9 to 11 a.m. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have Storytime with Miss Sue, which is hosted by Sue McConnell in the children's section, which is temporarily moved to the second floor of the library building. 
And then from 3 to 4.30 p.m., it's Gatlas, Gay at the Library After School. This program is held at the library. It's a partnership program between the library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. And the host of the program is Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood. The program offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. It's open to anyone ages 11 through 18, and the program is weekly on Tuesdays from 3 to 4.30 p.m. And then from 6 to 7 p.m., we have the pickup for the November Junior Chef. This is a drive through event. In other words, if you're familiar with it, you'll know what I mean. If not, just FYI. What you do is you register for this event and then you drive by the library at the designated time and pick up your kit. And then you go home and there's an online video component that allows the kids in your household to make whatever the treat of the month is. And this particular program is full, so just a reminder for those who have already signed up for it. And if you haven't signed up for the November Junior Chef and you've got kids that like to cook at home, take a look at our calendar of events and register for the December Junior Chef drive through on Wednesday, November 23rd, our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime, which will run from 10 to 10.30 a.m. and will be held in the children's section, currently on the second floor of the library building. From noon to 1 p.m., we have the monthly Sticky Notes Thematic Book Club. This is a Zoom program. You contact your hostess, Michelle Wells, to get the Zoom link. Then from 1 to 2 p.m., we have a fun, friendly, kids creating food program. <laughs> I guess that's how you would put it. It's Minion Cupcake Decorating. This event is full, so if you've already registered for it, remember to come with your kids between 1 and 2 p.m. on the 23rd. If you haven't registered for it and you like food creation programs for your kids, check out our calendar of events online because there's more of them coming up. And then moving on to our next program, we've got Mei Zhang from 1 to 3 p.m. Mei Zhang is held in the library's reading room, which is just across the library from the circulation desk. Moving on to the afternoon and evening programs for Wednesday, November 23rd. From 3 to 4.30 p.m., we've got ATLAS, which stands for At the Library After School. Your hostess, Kayla Crane, will have something fun for kids to do. Just show up after school. You don't have to register. Just drop in. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program held both via Zoom and at the library. If you need the Zoom link, you need to contact Michelle Wells. And of course, you can register for the program if you haven't already attended a Corning Adult Writers Group program. Moving on to Thursday, November 24th. That, of course, is Thanksgiving. And no big surprise to anyone, of course, the library is closed on Thanksgiving Day. So happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate. And if you don't celebrate, to everyone else that doesn't, have a great day anyway. Rest, relax, take a few minutes for yourself, because that's always good advice. You can't really go too far wrong with that. Ah, that dot. There's that dot. Yes, we know it's Thursday, November 24th. Moving on to the information about Friday, November 25th. And Saturday, November 26th, the library is closed those two days. So we're closed for cleaning on the 25th and 6th, and we're closed for Thanksgiving on the 24th. So if you're listening to this video cast prior to that, the week of Thanksgiving, you want to make sure you come into the library early to get your books and DVDs. If you like physical books and DVDs, if you'd rather stream or check out ebooks, you can check out our digital catalogs, which are accessible 24-7. All you need is an internet connection, and those, of course, are the Libby app for overdrive content, ebooks, and audiobooks, and Hoopla, which has on demand ebooks, audiobooks, comic books, albums, TV shows, and movies. All you need is a library card. If you have questions about Libby or Hoopla, give us a call, and staff will be happy to tell you all about those services. And here briefly are our library programs contacts. If you have questions about any of the programs at the library, feel free to touch base with us. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back in two weeks with a new episode of Library Connections. Have a great two weeks.